Hello, let's do another example. So in this case, we are going to design a full resistor biasing network for a discrete common source amplifier using an MMOS. We have some MMOS parameters there. And let's go over a step-by-step -step design procedure. So since this is going to be used for a common source amplifier, where we are going to, in the discrete case, we are going to couple the input at the base through a coupling capacitor and take the output at the drain. We want to make sure that the drain has maximum swing. So when we are designing this for a given quiescent current, we want to make sure that the source voltage is sufficiently low. So let's start with that. Our step one is to select our S to set the source voltage approximately equal to one volt. And so we have our S is equal to one volt divided by one milliamp, one kilo ohm. So we have one kilo ohm, which sets here the one volt and gives some feedback for stability. So this is our step one. Now, in this case, it's very easy to design the voltage divided network because we have a MOSFET that does not draw any current into the base, meaning the input impedance looking to the base is infinite. So we, it's just a voltage divider, but we need to know what is the voltage at the gate that we need for the voltage gate to source. Remember that when this transistor, the MOSFET, <coughs> is operating in the saturation region, the current at the drain, or the current drain to source, is determined by the voltage gate to source. And we are not in a situation like in a PJT transistor where if we know the voltage at the meter, or in this case, the voltage at the source one volt, we could say the voltage at the base, or in this case, the voltage at the gate is 1.7 volts. That's because we have an exponential relationship. In this case, the relationship is quadratic. So we actually do need to generally solve the equation. So in step two, determine what is the voltage gain to source for desire drain current, yes, and drain current, which in this case is one milliamps. So if you recall, the drain current is one half mu n e o x t o x with over length b g s minus b t square. It's that quadratic relationship, or one half k p times width length b g s minus b t square. Which in this case, let's plug in the the values. ID is equal to one half, and we have 50 times 10 to the minus six times 80 micro divided by two micro times VGS minus two volts is a threshold voltage square. Now, in general, we just plug in here one milliamp or one times 10 to the minus three, one half. In this case, we are going to have 50 times 10 to the minus six times 40. Actually, this gives you one milliamp. So it's easy in this case, we don't have to solve the equation, but in general, we will have to. For BGS equal, if, the, if BGS equals three volts, three minus two gives us one, and this gives us one milli. But in general, we will solve it and we will get two solutions, two BGS, one of which we are going to discard, the negative one. So in this case, we know that BGS is three volts, 
And so if Vgs is three volts, we know what the voltage is at the gate. One plus three, four volts, right? So our step, Three, our step three is going to be design the voltage divider network to set the voltage at the gate to be the voltage gate to source plus voltage at the source, which is in this case, we found that the voltage gate to source was three volts plus one volt equals four volts there. And so we can, in this case, accomplish that. In general, we are going to have that voltage at the gate is R2, R2 plus R1 times BDD. And we don't have to worry about the input impedance looking into the gate simply because it is infinity. And so we have four volts that we want, and we are going to select R2 and R1 as desired here. If we have a common source amplifier, like in this case, this is going to be the input impedance, the parallel combination of the two is going to be the input impedance of the amplifier, looking from here. So we are going to design it for that purpose. For instance, in this case, we could choose one mega ohm and four mega ohm. This will do it, right? So we have one divided by five, one fifth. So 20 over five is going to give us the four that we want. This will meet the requirements. So this will be here. Quickly, let's recap. So we are de designing a discrete common source amplifier. And the first step is all DC, is the biasing network. We have a four resistor biasing network. What is the first step that we do? We select RS in order to set BGS sufficiently low so that we maximize the swing at the drain terminal. So we can set it around one volt. So one volt for a one milli gives us a one K in the source. Contrary to the BJT, where we will immediately know what the voltage is at the base, if this was a BJT, in the case of a MOSFET, we don't know the voltage at the gate. We need to solve plugging for a particular value of our desired keys and current and solve for the voltage gate to source. And because the equation is quadratic, you have two solutions, one of which you need to discard. Does not make sense. Meaning the transistor will not be in saturation. So in this case, we did it and we found that the voltage gate to source needed to be three volts. And so if we know the voltage at the source, one volt, voltage gate through, gate to source, three volts, we are able to find the voltage at the gate, four volts, for which we can now design the voltage divider network, which can be as high as you want, because the input impedance looking into the gate is infinity. And so the common source amplifier is analogous in BJT technology to the common emitter amplifier. And one advantage that you have in the common source amplifier is that you can have higher input impedances due to the infinite input impedance looking into the gate. However, for discrete implementations, you will see that typically the gain is going to be lower than in BGT technologies. Thank you.